Welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're going to take a quick look, sneak peek if you will, at a Z77 motherboard. These are the new motherboards uh, that are being released basically in time for Ivy Bridge, uh, but those processors aren't out yet. But the uh, motherboard company is Gigabyte, ASUS, MSI, everybody else. They're going to have Z77 boards available before the third generation processors are actually released. Uh, so we'll be able to do testing and evaluation with Sandy Bridge very soon. We have here today actually uh, a Gigabyte Z77X UD5H motherboard. This is one of many Z77 boards that we'll be going through uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, but we've had a lot of questions, a lot of requests and, and interest in Z77 boards and kind of what they're going to be, what's going to be different about them, what's going to be unique about them. So we figured we'd go ahead and go through one here, talk about this Gigabyte board, show off what's unique about it, and uh, some of the features as well. Uh, pretty standard motherboard box in terms of what you'd expect to get from Gigabyte. We'll go ahead and uh, open this up. Set that off to the side. Now the board itself will look <clears throat> very familiar. It's not going to be any different than say the P67 to the Z68 designs that we have seen before. So here, here is the Z77 offering. You can see you've got PCI Express slots, a single PCI, um, passive coolers all around. We've got some interesting features that we'll show you. Let me set this off to the side quick and we'll go through the accessories on here. Now, Gigabyte is going to have an entire lineup, everything that you would expect from, uh, from the company in terms of UD3, 5, 7, maybe even 9 as we go up from that. Uh, really detailed manual. One of the things that I always like that Gigabyte does uh, in their manuals is have a really good detailed specifications list as well as a block diagram of everything, uh, which, which kind of alleviates a lot of the confusion, especially in our review process when we talk about, well, I wonder what controller that specific SATA chip is actually going through what PCI Express portion of the, uh, of the is it going through a chipset, is it going through a bridge. It actually gives you pretty detailed information there. We've got some SATA connectors, we've got your case badge, we've got an SLI bridge, and of course your back panel headers. And then uh, we do have one of the USB 3.0 add-ons. This actually allows you to mount it to a front three and a half inch bay on your case. Now the cable is a little bit shorter but as you'll see on the motherboard itself they actually positioned the USB 3.0 headers specifically for that case. So let's take a look at uh, the interesting part, the board itself. So here we have again the Z77X UDH5. Uh, first thing to notice is that the processor socket is still 1155. It will support Sandy Bridge processors. It will support the next generation of processors coming out in the not too distant future. Um, passive cooling on uh, the power regulation and on the chipset itself. Uh, pretty cool running platform as a whole. And we can't really talk too much about the specifications of the processor yet, but I can assure you that it is going to run um, quite a bit cooler than even Sandy Bridge was able to run thanks to the new 22 nanometer process tech. Looking at the front here, there are three full-size PCI Express by 16 slots, but you'll notice this one has this little red sticker over it at the bottom, and it's a little bit harder to see. It says, this PCIe by 4 slot requires an Ivy Bridge 3rd Gen CPU. For more information, refer to the user manual. And so what's interesting about this is it says in the manual that uh, if you use a single graphics card, it'll run it by 16. If you use two, they'll both run it by 8. And if you use a third, it'll be by 8, by 4, by 4. But apparently, this is only, I'm just guessing based on the specifications in the, in the product manual that, that the Ivy Bridge processor is more flexible in terms of the channels of PCI Express that it will allow. So you'll be, basically it'll be able to have three derivations of it as opposed to just two that you'd have before. Uh, there are three by one PCI Express slots and a legacy PCI uh, slot as well for some of those older types of devices. Probably the coolest feature, the one that a lot of people are trying to wonder about, right here in the middle, this little white connector is actually an mSATA port and specifically built for Intel Smart Response technology. So you'll be able to put an mSATA SSD here and be able to run the SRT technology, the SSD caching technology that Z68 offers, that Z77 is also going to offer. Uh, something I did just realize with this is that when you install an mSATA 
card in here, one of the PCI Express slots from the Intel chipset actually becomes disabled, uh, port 5, which I think is this one up here. Actually, it says it right there. SATA 2 port 5 will be disabled when MSATA slot is in use. So that's actually really nice on Gigabyte's part. They point out pretty specifically what is going to change with that. And people don't like question marks and that type of thing. Uh, we've got eight SATA ports, SATA 3, SATA 3, and then SATA 2. Six of these come from the chipset, two of them from an external uh, Marvell controller. You'll notice right here, maybe a little bit difficult to see, this is actually a SATA power connection. The Gigabyte states is used to send additional power to the PCI Express slots. If you're using multiple GPUs, if you're doing any kind of overclocking on those, that might be useful for, uh, for those purposes. Up here in the top corner, if I can arrange this correctly, we've got our power button, reset button, clear CMOS, your LED indicator. Here's you've got your voltage monitoring outputs right here. Your, your points are here where you can measure the um, memory, processor, and uh, vCore, all those types of voltages if uh, you want to keep an eye on those while you're doing some LN2 overclocking and even more standard overclocking. If we look at the actual, let's see, back panel configuration, we'll take off these protective covers here so we can see what we're looking at. And you've got uh, DVI and VGA as well as DisplayPort and HDMI. So you've actually got four display outputs on this motherboard. Uh, it should come then as no surprise that the next generation processor is going to completely be able to support running a discrete GPU and integrated GPU at the same time. Hence, why up top here, you will see this Lucid Virtue logo. And uh, I believe it'll come with the Lucid Virtue MVP software that will allow things like virtual VSync and high performance all while using the power of your discrete GPU when hooked up to one of these integrated ports, if that's what you want to do. You've also got your optical audio output. You've got uh, USB, FireWire, eSATA. You've got dual gigabit Ethernet. You can see you've got four USB 3.0 ports on the back. You've got your analog eight-channel audio connectors. So there's lots, of, uh, lots of, of connectivity options on this board. And I did mention the USB 3.0 headers on it, and there's actually three of them here. Uh, two here at the bottom, right here. So these are both USB 3.0. They'll support two more USB 3.0 ports each. And then this one up top here, uh, which is easier to access with the little adapter that we showed you in the on the unboxing originally uh, for installation in the front of your case. So that's going to round out our quick sneak preview of the Gigabyte Z77X UD5H motherboard. We're going to have a lot more to talk about in terms of these Gigabyte offerings, as well as motherboards from other vendors coming up very soon, even before the Ivy Bridge processor release. So we thank you guys for stopping by uh, PC Perspective Live.